So I'd like to talk about the twitch response. There's certainly some conjecture in the literature about whether to get a twitch response or not, and certainly debate amongst so-called needle experts, again, whether to get a twitch or not. There's some compelling research by Shaw and Gilliams that showed that on either side of a twitch response, there's certainly a change in the chemical environment. And so people are leaning towards getting this twitch response. But I think they've got the debate a little bit wrong. It's not actually, do we twitch or not? When we teach our GEMT courses, it's, it's about, yes, needling in order to get a twitch response, but we want to twitch the muscle out. What does that mean? It means we apply a stimulus through the end of the needle, usually a pistoning technique, in order to get a twitch response. And what we want to see is a diminishing return with the same stimulus. So we will reapply the same technique, and hopefully the twitch response gets smaller and smaller. Then you know it has responded to your manual intervention. Dry needling is like any other manual technique, and it's applied intuitively by an experienced clinician based on subjective and objective clinical findings. You then apply the appropriate technique to the appropriate patient, and you need to see them respond to your manual intervention. Dry needling is exactly the same. It's not about getting a twitch and taking the needle out. It's about seeing the patient respond to your needling, and as we say, we twitch it out. If you want to know more about this, Come along to one of our level one courses and we will teach you the GEMT approach to dry needling. Look forward to seeing you at a course soon.